Hey everybody, so I'm super excited about a crack that I think has finally clicked in my head consistently. It's called the cookie cutter. Another cool name, I have no idea why it's called that. If you do, let me know. Um, but anyway, so it's called the cookie cutter and uh, the placement of the whip before the crack actually uses the other hand, the free hand to support it, which is just different and, uh, and, and really cool. Um, so I'm gonna go into a little bit of generally how to crack it, but I don't wanna waste a lot of time on that. If you're looking for a whip tutorial on that and other cracks, my first recommendation is always um, a woman named April Jennifer Choi, C-H-O-I. You can find her on YouTube, Facebook. The best step-by-step -step video tutorials on whip and other stuff that, uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, but I'm gonna talk about it a little bit for context, but then I'm really gonna get into the three very minuscule things that I discovered that helped me finally uh, uh, figure it out. Uh, so first I'll talk about the crack in general. Again, it's called a cookie cutter. <clears throat> so the whip starts actually behind your back, um, like so, okay? So the handle is back here, and then I'm gonna reach sort of underneath and take the whip in my hand here, okay? And the crack, I bring both hands in one direction at the same time. They move in, they move together. And then both hands move back out. This hand releases and the, the hand that's holding the handle pulls and cracks the whip. So if I can actually get it right, it looks something like this. Not a super loud crack because you don't have a lot of distance, but you get the idea. Both arms in, both arms out, release, pull for the crack. Okay. So here are the three things. If there's somebody out there who's also been struggling with the cookie cutter, here are three things that I just discovered in my own body mechanics that really helped me get it. So first of all, the, the, the off hand, the free hand, don't leave a lot of slack. Don't move it forward and then put it in position. So see all this hanging down here? That's what I was doing before and that doesn't work for me. Keep it tight. So don't leave a lot of slack down there. That's step one. Because then you're leaving yourself more whip from here down. That's more distance, that's more time for the whip to build up a good wave and then actually crack. So that's one thing. Uh, second thing is whip is going to be hanging straight down from your hand. Make sure, this is really getting into the, the picky stuff that I love to get into when I teach whip. Um, if I let it sort of cross over and hang in front of my feet a little more that direction, then when I lift to pull, it swings out in a circle, okay? And any anyone I've taught whip to has probably heard me talk about always throw in a straight line. The whip may make a circle, the whip may make a curve, but you always throw in a straight line. Let the whip handle the circles and curves. So I really want that to hang straight down from where my hand is and not sort of flop over to one side or the other. Uh, and the third thing is, and again, uh, for my, my whip students, uh, you're hearing me start to talk about uh, the, the push points or where on your hand you're pushing I think I'm gonna do one or more videos specifically about that. But for this, uh, grips can, can change for different cracks. I'm definitely pushing, I found it helped to push with my thumb. That gives me a little bit more leverage behind the back to push and get some good leverage on that crack because you're dealing with not a lot of distance here. So you really wanna make everything uh, count. So uh, let me see if I can get a few more pretty consistently. Not bad. That's the idea. Both arms up, release, pull back. Out and pull back. Uh, you can get into this position. I think this would be really cool for, for stage combat. It's sort of a cool looking pose, uh, kind of kung fu-y. And uh, you can get into this position from anything that swings the whip around to your outside. So that could be an overhead, that puts it in that position. It could be a backhand that swings it around. It could even be a reverse circus that brings it around to that side, okay? And then very easily leads into an overhead. From here, out, 
crack into an overhead. So yeah, so I'm uh, super excited about that. This is another one that just eluded me for a really long time because there's so little room to make that crack. Uh, there's just a lot of subtlety. You've got to get a lot of little things just right. But uh, tonight, just out here, it finally sort of clicked and I was able to do many in a row. Uh, so that's the cookie cutter. Uh, work on it. It's super fun. And uh, that's it. Bye.